Hello and welcome to the Kramer Motorcycles Aftermarket Oil Cooler Performance Upgrade. I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide how to fit the cooler system to your bike. Before we start, I'll put up the following two sheets, uh, one with materials and tools required to fit the aftermarket cooler system, and the second sheet for the preparation, main steps and the finishing steps. It's a good idea to screenshot these or print them out. The first step we are going to take is to start up the motorcycle and warm it up. Once the motorcycle is warm, we'll turn off the bike and then we will empty out the oil. We'll start with the filter screen screws and then head over to the oil filter. The next step is to undo the drain bolt for the water system. This has a copper washer and will be renewed. Now we're going to undo the lower mounting screws for the radiator and then undo the jubilee clips holding on the radiator hoses. Remove the radiator hoses from the position, undo the top mounting bolts for the radiator and then gently remove the radiator itself. Unclip the exhaust springs and use a little bit of lubricant just to free up the exhaust. The exhaust may need some gentle knocking to help free from its place. Remove the exhaust and clean any debris from the area. Next, we're going to take off the fairing mount from under the engine. With a bolt on either side of the link plates, we're going to remove these so we can free up the link plate and allow the rear wheel to be lifted up using the strap. Loosening the axle of the swing arm may be required to allow the link plates to move freely. Here is an example of the range of motion that you're looking for. Take the strap and use it to hold up the rear wheel. And now that link plates are free, you can take off the sump. Due to the sump gasket, you may need to use a soft mallet just to free up the sump. As pointed out, this is the location of the oil pressure spring that we will be replacing. To remove the spring, the retaining washer must be pushed back and pulled out. Remove the old spring, place the new spring into position and then refit the retaining washer. Now that the high pressure spring has been installed, clean the sump face and the bottom of the motor and relay some silicon sealant back onto the sump. Tighten up the sump bolts to torque. The motor will now be using a thermostat. Remove the old bypass and fit the new thermostat part. Now we are going to remove the old oil and water cooler. This can still have some oil and water inside of it, so please pay attention. We will be using the same oil cooler gasket as before. Clean this up and clean up the position of where the oil cooler adapter plate will be placed onto the motor. Place the oil cooler adapter plate as positioned in the video, including the top radiator mount. Clean the surrounding area and then mount the lower mounting bracket for the oil cooler, including the bolts. Install the upper and the lower oil cooler hoses as positioned in the video. The longer hose will be used for the upper position and the shorter hose for the lower. Using the correct size spanner, tighten both of the oil cooler hoses to the adapter plate. Using exhaust paste, refit the exhaust and position both of the cooler hoses through the exhaust manifolds. The rear wheel can now be unstrapped and lowered and the bolts for the link plates to be refastened. Refit the lower fairing mount. First, 
fasten the oil cooler from the lower mount and attach the lower oil cooler hoses. Now it's time to reposition the radiator. Start with the top mount, refitting of the radiator pipes, and finally fastening the lower mounting of the radiator to the upper mounting of the oil cooler. Thanks for watching. We hope you're going to enjoy this upgrade.